booking for the grand finals, but lost to Perth, then to Wollongong Hawks. Now, 10 years down the, down the road, the Crocs are back on track to make it to the big dance once again. And to bring us up to speed on all things Crocville is Russell Hinder. And Russell, is it like, what is it like in Townsville? Back in the days when Rob Rose was playing, when it was on the eve of the playoffs and then to the final four and to the finals, people were wearing like crocodile contacts. <laughs> and, and, and you guys were like six pages deep in the, in, in the newspaper. No, it's, is uh, it like that yet? It's still a wonderful city. Uh, we survived the cyclone, so that's a that's a positive. But no, you know, you still see the croc tails hanging out the boots of the car, and um, come playoff time, obviously it picks up. And this last uh, sort of five weeks of the season, it's really going to amp up. We're uh, we're pushing for for coverage, obviously. It's such a small town between other codes, not to be mentioned. But um, <laughs> no, but this last five weeks should be exciting and. You know, the more you win, the more coverage you get. You, you've been flying under the radar a little bit, and uh, you look at your team, you go 10 deep, really, really nice outfit. What's, uh, what's been the key this year? I, I, I really like the form of Luke Shincher. His final series last year was probably not his best performance, but this year he seems fantastic. Mate, I'll, we run everything we have through Lukey. Lukey's our guy. Um, we want to get him the ball early and often, late and often, and in the middle and often. <laughs> And, uh, so often. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, what, that's the secret. Don't tell anyone though. So, but we love Luke and we love what he brings. And uh, he he did struggle a little in Perth, and he, he'd probably be the first to admit it. And he he called us up and wanted a lifeline. And we you don't when you're Luke Shench, you don't call up and need generally need a lifeline. But we we were more than happy to accommodate the big fella. Russell, tell us a little bit because you know it's it's pretty well chronicled. We haven't seen a lot of you this year. You're yeah, under no. the radar. Yeah. Uh, I, it, has that affected, in all honesty, the group? I mean, do you have a, a siege mentality, a fortress mentality up there about what you're doing? No, not really, because um, we get asked this a, a little bit about the national coverage, but we get such great local coverage and stuff that you still feel like a little bit of a rock star up there, and there's a little bit of fishbowl <laughs> up there anyway. So if we were getting national coverage too, guys like. Will Blaylock would just have a massive head and think he's <laughs> awesome, so we don't want that. Well, Russ, how about your three-point shot? We just watched you knock one down there and, you know, able to step out and also, yeah. you know, also uh, you're a big man, can work from the high post, but, you know, when did you start to develop that three-point shot? It seems like it's kind of come and gone in your career. Yeah. Like sometimes you shoot it well, sometimes you're 80% from the foul line, and, you know, your shooting seems to be up and down, but obviously from the three-point line, you can't be left alone. Well, uh, thank you. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, no, 47% but, in case you were wondering, Russ. I didn't know that, 47.2, <laughs> but let's not <laughs> split hairs. Um, it, it's a confidence thing with me, Steve. I'm 100% confidence kind of guy, and when I went to the Sydney Kings, that confidence was uh, without a doubt stripped away from me. And oh. I, I love my time at Sydney, don't get me wrong, and I, I uh, enjoyed my time with Brian Gorgian, but I was coming off the bench, I was maybe a 12-minute a game player, um, and if, if that shot didn't go in, I felt the little the Bo hook. Peeps hook coming. <laughs> come on, come on. And he'd get me. And it was quick. So if I made one, great. I'm out there till I miss one. But if you miss your first one, get off. So, uh, but with Townsville, Trevor Gleeson is an amazing um, coach in the way of if you have an open shot and you don't shoot it, that's when the hook comes out. So it's, it's a complete different mindset. And my first year up there, it probably took a little while to get used to. And, but the last couple of years, it's if you get a good look at the, at the hoop through our offence, and you, you better shoot it or you're getting yelled at. So. I, reckon, uh, I reckon I wouldn't mind playing in that uh, system. <laughs> your name's been brought up. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, when you think well, of... you played for your father. Yeah, but yeah. he had a bit of a hook every now and again. But you played what? not much. Not you. 48 minutes. Hey, it's you. not about me. It's yeah. about Russ. <laughs> 47 and But it's also about... Nine um, minutes. <laughs> it's about uh, uh, Trevor Gleeson. I think that he probably hasn't been given the recognition he deserves. When you think of what he's done for Townsville in the playoffs every year, he's been there. And just the coaching job that he does, he's a little bit old school, running the flex, a bit of motion, shares it all around. Talk a little bit about uh, his role with the team and uh, as far as instilling that confidence, not just in you. I completely agree with you. Mm. Um, in my three years, we've made the playoffs well if we keep this role going, it'll be three, three years in a row, and I don't think he's missed in five. So he's, uh, he, he's done such a great job up there, and like I, I touched on, it's, 
it's great that we get so much coverage, but it can be a bit of a curse getting that much coverage mm. as well. And coming from Sydney, I wasn't used to it at all. Whether you know, it's if you get anything, it's just a little, little blurb. Um, but he he deals with that pressure. He teaches us how to deal with that pressure, and he puts you know, his own sort of spin on everything. He's a, he's a student of the well, game. But, but at the start of the year, it just seemed like that there might have been a little friction between the players and the coach at all. Is, is, that, a, is that, you know, when you're going to... No, never? No, we have such a hard pre-season up there. It's, he, he puts you through the ringer. And then over the last three years, it's sort of carried over. And if you look at it, I don't know what our record was, but it always seems that come New Year's, come Christmas, come New Year's, away. we hit a roll. Mm. And it's because we are so fit and it's because we have gotten through that early season grind of just, he puts you through the ringer. And if you're not willing to work, don't go to town. He he is old school in that manner. He he uh, puts you through the, through the ringer. Mm. Russ, you personally seem to play with a great deal of passion. You, you, you throw yourself around a fair bit and you seem to be one of, a, one of the real leaders of that club and the clubs that you've, you've played at before. I think back to West Sydney days and so forth. Who, who or what inspires you to play that type of role? Um, my bank manager. <laughs> he's really, really convincing when it comes to... He, uh, but in all seriousness, I love my job. Um, I, I, my first job was sweeping warehouses for my dad from when I was 13 till I was 18. And that job sucks. I don't know if you've ever done it, but mm. don't. Um, so when you get a chance to do this for a living, you, you grab it with both hands and you, and you, uh, you embrace it. And, and I just have such a love for, for the, the energy, the passion, and, and you get the, you know, hang out with all the guys and it's just the best job on earth. And um, it, it would be a disservice to, I've got a lot of friends who've fallen by the wayside over the years due to salary cap, due to points, due to whatever. Um, and, and I owe it to them to, to give this effort because, you know, I know, I know I'm stealing money, but I don't want them to, you know, <laughs> Jeez, I tell me about it. I think you're giving it no. pretty good value. No, yeah. it's, it's you know, it's emotional speak, on speak, I've lost yeah. a lot of mates yeah. from... Uh, going to cry from here in a minute. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You've brought uh, a tear to my eye. <laughs> love you, Drew. Well, speaking of passion, you know, <laughs> you guys have only lost one game at the Swamp this year. It must be just a, a great feeling to, especially when they start playing that Crocodile song, you know, you got the game in the bag, but when that place is rocking, sure that is a very difficult place to win. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of players, you know, a lot of players, even though they don't win, really enjoy playing in Townsville because of the atmosphere. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, crowd and um, knowledgeable crowd. And it's, it's a crowd, you wouldn't, you really wouldn't believe the number of people who come up to you and say, I've been a ticket holder for 18 years. I've been mm. a ticket for, for 15. And, um, that they, they just keep coming back. They love it. They can't get enough of it. So we're uh, we're just blessed up there, yeah. and and uh, they they put the pressure on you. And like I said before, if you're not willing to work and if you're not willing to win, don't come to Townsville because anything else is unacceptable. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Russ. Um, normally we just you know have you on for the first segment, and then yeah, if you I'm don't go very on. well, no. if you don't go very well, we <laughs> we ask you to leave. But the hook, the hook wanna, comes out. You want to hang around? We got some NBA in the next segment. Got the seatbelt on. <laughs> what? what? What's, What's this? Here? What's this, Corey? <laughs> What's this? Oh, there we go. What's this? <laughs> the Russ hey. Hinder, at Russ Hinder. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. You can get one of these, Drewy. And you $75 each. 100% of the proceeds, though, in all seriousness, are going to me. So if you, if you want one, 70, you send me a white T-shirt and a uh, handmade, handmade yeah. Yeah. and a stamped self-addressed like envelope, it. and I'll send that back, $75. I like we it. give these guys just way too much leeway on this show. <laughs> Sit down and relax. Don't go anywhere.